Good, Good morning, morning, Bridge Kids. We are going to do a little science project this morning. I have given the girls some very dirty pennies, but there's one pretty penny. So in our story today, and in the past couple weeks, we have heard that God is sending his people into exile because of their sin, but he promised that he was going to restore them. So this little project helps us to understand what restore means. Because to restore something means we're going to bring it back to its full glory. So these dirty pennies are going to come back to their beautiful state. So if you want to do this at home, you need some vinegar and you need some salt. Do you want to hold us? Half a teaspoon of salt. Maddie, you can pour it in. That's good. Wow. Pour in the salt. Too much. And this is how we're going to clean. Pour this. So it's all the salt? This is how we're going to clean the pennies. And then you drop the pennies. And if you have Q-tips, you can use the Q-tip to stir it around and kind of um, rub so on the penny. What's happening to the penny, guys? It's way more beautiful than it was. <laughs> it's becoming more beautiful? Yeah. Is it going to be as pretty as this penny? Mm, probably this is the prettiest seen. penny we've ever seen. It's almost done. Okay, you can pick it up with your fingers and see if... It's changed colors, huh? And it's it not lost, as dark as it was, right? It lost all of its mark. So if we let these continue to soak, they will be more and more restored to their form of glory. And remember when Jacob, sorry, not Jacob, when David was the king, Israel was at its greatest and God promised that he would restore them and he restores us through Jesus. So let's watch our story today and hear what he's going to teach us. And let's sing some praises to God. <laughs>
today we are starting a new scripture memory verse. It says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. So God is saying this to his people when they're in exile and life seems really hard, but he wants them to remember that he is the one in control and he knows their future and that all of these hard situations are going to be for their good. It's going to give them a good future. It's not going to harm them. And this should give them hope. So even though he said this to people back then, he also says this to us today. So as you are learning this verse, remember that these promises are for you as well. In our prayer time lately, we've been learning about the Lord's Prayer, which is the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, and it helps us know how to pray. So we've already talked about how he wants us to praise God. And then last week, we talked about how we should pray for what God wants, not just for what we want. And today, the part we are going to learn says, give us today our daily bread. So this teaches us that God wants us to pray for the things that we need, and we all need to eat. But you probably don't worry about what you're going to eat. You know that you have food in your house, but we all need something. What do you need? Remember, God loves it when we talk to him, and he wants us to tell him what we need because he cares about what we think and feel. And so what do you need? Maybe you have a test in school and you want God to help you to remember the things that you've learned. Or maybe you're upset with your brother or sister or someone at school and you need help that God would show you how to be kind or how to interact with that person. You can pray for anything that you need. So let's pray the prayer together. And so you'll see it on the next screen. We'll say it out loud. And then you tell God what you need, okay? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Now you tell God what you need. God, thank you for caring about our needs and for listening to your children. We love you and we thank you for Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray, amen. Today we're going to meet a new prophet named Obadiah. His book of the Bible is the shortest. It only has one chapter, but it's important. And it reminds us that God speaks to his people through the prophets. And to understand what Obadiah is saying, we have to go back to Genesis, the first book of the Bible, and remember the family of Abraham. Do you remember that God gave Abraham a promise that he would have a family that he would have land, and that the savior of the world would come through his family. So Abraham has his son Isaac, and Isaac has two sons, twins, Jacob and Esau. And you might remember that Jacob and Esau did not get along because Jacob was tricky, and he tricked Esau and made him really angry. But they made up in the end, and Jacob was going to be the person that God was going to send the Savior through his line, not Esau's line. And it wasn't because Jacob was better than Esau. We saw all the bad mistakes that Jacob made. But now in our story today, we're going to see that Esau's family becomes the nation of Edom. And Jacob's family becomes the nation of Judah. 
And you might know that the Savior comes through Judah, right? And again, it's not because Jacob was better. Jacob made lots of mistakes. But we'll see in this story that Edom is not following God. They are worshiping other gods. And we know Judah did that too, right? That's why they got sent into exile. But there's a time when Judah is following God and they need help and Edom doesn't want to help them. So listen to what Obadiah tells the people of Edom. God sent a message to Obadiah the prophet in a vision. God had news about a country called Edom. The people who lived in Edom were like brothers to the people in Judah. Both groups were descendants of Isaac's twin sons, Jacob and Esau. The people in Edom came from the family of Esau. God's people came from the family of Jacob. The people of Edom didn't love God. They worshiped false gods. They lived in the mountains and trusted the mountains and their own strength to protect them. The people thought that they were better than everyone else. The Edomites didn't get along with God's people in Judah. When the Babylonians took over the city of Jerusalem, the people in Edom just sat back and watched. They didn't try to protect Judah. The people of Edom even went into Jerusalem and took things that didn't belong to them. God said he was going to punish Edom. Listen up, God said. Out of all the nations, you will be the least important. No one will like you. You were proud and I will punish you. You thought you were safe, but I will bring you down. Obadiah's message for the people of Edom was bad news. God was going to allow Edom's enemies to take away everything they had. Even the people who were their friends would steal from them. Many people would be killed. God said to Edom, You were cruel to the people in Judah, so you will be punished. When Judah needed your help, you stood back and did nothing. You laughed and were happy that they were attacked. Every bad thing you did to others will be done to you. The day of the Lord is near, Obadiah warned. Every evil thing you did to others will be done to you. God said that the bad things that were happening to his people in Judah were only for a little while. God would deliver his people. But when I punish you, Edom, God said, everything will be destroyed. Obadiah's message from God had good news for God's people. My people will have the land that belongs to Edom, God said. God's people will return to their homes and God would take care of his people. But Edom's punishment was forever. Like God's people were mistreated by the people of Edom, Jesus was mistreated by his own people. God will punish sin. Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment we deserve for our sin. We can trust Jesus to make wrong things right. God said to the people of Edom that they were going to get what they deserved. And they deserved punishment. And God's punishment is always right and good. And sometimes in a situation like this, we can think, I'm glad that I'm not like Edom. I'm good like Judah. But you know, we can see ourselves in Edom and in Judah because sometimes we don't trust God and worship God the way that we should. And sometimes we're selfish and sometimes we're even happy when people get into trouble. And the only reason that God saved Judah was because he had made a promise to Abraham that he would send a savior. And so God saves us, not because we are always good, but because he made a promise that if we trust in Jesus, that Jesus will take our punishment that we deserve and that we can be in right relationship with God again. That's one reason why we don't want to be happy when someone else gets in trouble. We want to pray for them and pray that they would come to trust Jesus too. And so 
how will they know about Jesus and that they can be forgiven if we don't tell them? Because there are a lot of people in our lives, they might have heard about Jesus, but they might not understand what the Bible says. And you are learning what the Bible says about Jesus. So I'm going to pray for you this week that you will have an opportunity to tell people about Jesus, that you would have an opportunity to pray for others. And you pray for me too, that I would have opportunities to tell people about Jesus. Because this shows the way that we love God and it shows how Jesus and God loved us. So let's take some time and answer some questions about this story. And don't forget to check out our Bridge Kids website for more activities you can do throughout the week. And we'll see you here again next time. Bye.
Thank you. 